This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Friday, February 11th, 2022. I'm going to tell a story this week. Five years ago, I cold called Reverend Jean Pupke asking for help. I was a brand new minister. I had just been called by this congregation in Lincoln, Nebraska. I had no real idea what I was doing. I had some good ideas during candidating, but was trying to figure out how to implement them. And Gene Pupke had just run um, to, to be the president of the denomination, to be the UUA president. I had talked to her once or twice during the campaign, but she didn't know me from Adam. Um, and she didn't win but that race, but she showed an organizational and, and management mind that is rare in my profession. And, and I knew I needed help. Um, and so I just picked up the phone and called her. I knew I needed a mentor for the preliminary fellowship process that I was in. Um, and I thought, well, what the hell? I'll just, I'll, I'll ask the person that uh, that I really want to work with, and, and maybe she'll say yes. I only learned later, um, after I'd been working with Jean for a year, that, that she said yes to everybody. <laughs> that, that she mentored a generation of UU ministers. Dozens of us called her asking for help, and she said yes to so, so many in both formal and informal ways. So much of what's happened since that phone call five years ago in Lincoln and in my ministry happened because of her counsel. We met every month for three years. Jean talked me through a misconduct case at the church, how to do staff supervision, how to articulate a vision to the congregation, how to balance social justice and pastoral care and administrative needs. She talked me through the birth of Stacy and I's first child as we were serving that first year. Towards the end of our, our time in a formal mentorship relationship, we were in the first couple months of the global pandemic where we were all right back to not knowing what we were doing. And in every conversation I had with her, I, I knew two things. One, that she would affirm what we were going through in Lincoln as serious and, and worth consideration. And two, without fail, no matter how well I thought we were doing, she would, she would challenge me to ask how we could be doing better. Reverend Pupke died this week, um, unexpectedly. Uh, after a fall. Our faith is diminished. Our institution, I can, I can hear her saying, say the institution, call it an institution, is diminished. The last time she and I spoke, we, we looked forward to meeting at General Assembly in person for the first time in years. Um, Celebrating full fellowship with me for me, um, so being done with that that mentorship relationship, um, and celebrating her next steps professionally. And in that conversation, we reminisced about um, her charge to the congregation that she gave at my ordination here in Lincoln. She says, for I wish to go back to Richmond and hear in just a few years of the wonders of the Church of Lincoln. So if there have been wonders in Lincoln, and there have been, they are in no small part because of her. So we'll give the last word to Jean this week and play that charge.
Oscar, I ask you to show that nothing has been slipped into your hands. <laughs> Therefore, no one shall expect magic. <laughs> I begin by thanking you for the honor of addressing the congregation you serve, Oscar. I know that the privilege of ministry, especially when it is young, seems fragile sometimes and worrisome and demanding and you entrust me with this honor and I thank you for that. It has been my honor this year to be in conversation with Oscar, nominally so that he might be mentored and objectively so that I might be mentored. I was blessed. I have only three words to extend to you as a congregation today. Therefore, you may wish to pull out something to write them down with, if in fact you feel challenged by the emotion of the moment. This good minister of at least 20 minutes now <laughs> has come among you and spoken with me at length. I know you by name and all of it is blessed and good. He is quite happy here. So you are off to a good start. Yet three things I must tell you. First of all, listen. Not that polite thing, but the real deep down to your toes thing. Don't jump to do something. Don't react, lest the doing be your undoing. You have called to your church a thoughtful man, a prophetic and compassionate man, to listen and discern together, all of you, he and you together, is the source of all power. If you wish to be a congregation of power, comfort to the, to the poor, to the sick, to the lonely, to the imprisoned, if you wish to speak and have Lincoln listen, then you must listen first. Stretch. You have called a minister who is practical and brave, but he does not lack for imagination. He knows you and he have limits, but he would not have you live inside them. He calls all of us and you to imagine what is beyond our limits and how together we might become something more. And that we might raise the voice not just of this church, but of all of Unitarian Universalism when the voice is needed most when others have gone away because the lessons are too difficult or the challenges for the gay, lesbian, trans community too hard, when women's rights might be at risk, when conversion therapy guides too many parents, this is a man who will speak and if it stretches you to stand behind him, be brave as he is brave, risk as he risks for you, so that your congregation may become true community. And last, love. Because you'll get it wrong, because you'll have to try again, because you will misunderstand, but when you do, remember, look to yourself first, because our pilgrim tradition is about the act of conscience and reflection about what we are doing. In the order of service, Oscar has placed this quote from Reinhold Niebuhr, Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. Allow yourself to be saved 
I love. For I wish to go back to Richmond and hear in just a few years of the wonders of the Church of Lincoln. Sacramentally, interpersonally blessing this world unafraid. I listen. The Latin for good words is Benedictus. Benedictus.